Hey everybody, Brad Hall here from Phoenix Physical Therapy. Um, a quick education piece on what we call thermal modalities, heating and icing. Um, we've put up on the board here some very basic principles that you can use as decision makers. Um, but obviously heat and ice are going to create very different effects. Um, when and how much to use them is one of the great purposes of this video. So first, let's first talk about heat. What is heat going to do? Heat is going to increase blood flow to a region. That is called vasodilation. The second thing that heat is going to do is going to increase the pliability of the tissue. We can think of a rubber band out in the sun. As it gets warmer, it's going to become more pliable. Um, the elastin and collagen in our connective tissue, as the temperature rises, become more able to move. That's why people like a sauna, a steam room, a jacuzzi before workouts, or when sometimes they suffer from stiffness and tightness. So heat, we know blood flow and pliability. Ice is going to create some different effects. We know that ice, just as much as this increases blood flow, is going to create what's called vasoconstriction. Blood vessels are going to shrink, and this helps with swelling. Um, the second one is that the nervous system, as those nerve endings decrease in their tissue temperature, they become less sensitive, and they can create numbness, which can also be a form of pain control. So we use our ice when we have swelling and we have pain. And we use our heat when we need increased presence of blood flow. Um, this is very common with muscle and tendon injuries. Or when we need more pliability, when things are stiff and unable to move. So a couple words of warning about this. Heat. We do not want to heat for the first 72 hours after an injury. That's what's called the acute phase. The body is already increasing the blood flow naturally. Once we've turned that spigot on, we don't want to let it run too long. We don't want to create an excessive response of blood flow, which would, like we said, talk about creating more swelling. Now, the other thing we want to be aware of is icing. Icing for duration, depending on the temperature, um, an ice bath is usually one of the most aggressive forms for changing tissue temperature. An ice bath is going to be something more in the realm of seven minutes at a time. Whereas if you create um, a change of tissue temperature with an ice pack, that's something maybe in the ballpark of 15 minutes at a time. Now, for safety, you always want to inspect your skin whenever you're using an ice pack. Um, when something's put on, generally we don't ever want to have something directly on the skin. These are the ice packs that we love. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, but two attributes about an ice pack that we think are super important is it needs to be super moldable. Um, whether it's an elbow or a low back, this thing needs to be, be able to change shape and make contact with all of the area around the, the region of the injury. Now the second thing that's super important is that this is one, these ice packs that we use get extremely cold. This is one that you do not have on the skin, it will burn you. So always being aware of the integrity of your skin and not, not allowing for that to be traumatized. Now another form of ice that we mentioned is that you can also use an ice massage. Now this is one that we usually use it in quantity rather than time. In a small cup like this, what we'll have somebody do is fill it with water, put it in the freezer. Once it freezes, you pull it out and you've got this solid piece of ice. What you'll do is you tear off the edges of this cup. And what this allows you to do is to have a little handle. And then you've got this big top surface of ice. This is a phenomenal technique for superficial tissues things like a forearm or an Achilles tendon or maybe a very small superficial injury of the knee. But what you can do is you can then use that as a form of both massage and tissue temperature change or icing at the same time. This is one that we love. We find that people kind of like to find an angle on that cup and almost kind of scrape up and down. If you're, you're developed a chronic injury, something that's been going on a long time with scar tissue, you can even get after the scar tissue and change tissue temperature at the same time. Um, generally, we'll have people go through almost a whole cup. It usually lasts like seven to 10 minutes, but this is another great technique for superficial injury. So ice bath, ice pack, ice massage, um, durations and intensities should definitely be used in quantity of how it's going to change the tissue, the tissue temperature. Um, one contraindication or something to be aware of with ice is if we ice for too long at a time, the body can perceive that the tissue is under distress because of the long duration, almost like a frostbite type situation, where the body will then increase blood flow because of the icing. That's one, if we ice for too long, we can create a counteracting effect. Um, that's one to keep an eye on. So as it pertains to thermal therapies, heating and icing, the big things you want to take home is know why they work and what you're trying to achieve with them and making sure that you're using the proper dosages.